Welcome to another episode of From Taylor's with Love, episode 25. I'm here with my good friend Matt Spacer from the Suits of James Bond, bondsuits.com. How are you doing today, Matt? Hey, P, I'm doing great. How about you? Cool. Oh, I'm, I'm top dog. Thanks, pal. Well, actually, I've got a new dog. Where is he? Hold on. Hold on. Wait, wait. Hold on. <laughs> oh. Can anyone see that? Oh, oh, man, there he is. It doesn't make for great podcasting, but it's a tiny cockapoo. Oh, Hello. <laughs> and I should say, the other voice that you're hearing is my good friend David Evans from Grey Fox Blog. How are you doing today, David? I'm fine, thanks, Peace, and you? Excellent, yes. Really yeah. good. David, um, I, oh, a real treat to have dog. you on the podcast. I've got oh, my yeah. dog here as well. He's just appeared. Oh, oh there's Harry. <laughs> there's Harry. Blog dog Harry. Hashtag blog dog. I'm hoping he's not going to be too much of a nuisance. Now, you sit quietly. <laughs> Matt, you need to get your cat in. <laughs> My cat, yeah. I don't know where she is at the moment. Yeah, I used to have a yellow lab when I was a, a kid. They're, they're, they're the best dogs. They are lovely dogs, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. Well, well, Harry wouldn't mind your cat either. He's very good with cats. Oh, excellent. Really? Well, that's good because, I mean, um, look, my, my dog has just met the cats so he's only been here a couple of days we've got the cats in already two blue yeah. russians um one of them's quite a beast manya and she's like the dominant force in the house so she's bullying everyone around at the minute slapping uh slapping the dog uh, the dog yeah. was quite curious ran up to it and go hi i'm roger how are you doing and she just went <laughs> get the hell out of my sight so um we're hoping that at some point the zoo will calm down so if you hear any kicking off in the background, any screaming and yapping, it's just the animals running right. Moving on, swiftly on. David, um, please. Obviously, I think a lot of our British listeners will be familiar with you and your Instagram page and your blog, but maybe some of uh, our international listeners might not be so familiar with you. If you wouldn't mind just giving a quick introduction and a thumbnail sketch of who you are. Sure. My name's David Evans, uh, and I have a blog called Grey Fox, which I started, I think, seven years ago, um, really almost in the pre-Instagram days, but uh, I, I can now be found more often on Instagram as Grey Fox Blog, where I talk about men's style and increasingly sort of lifestyle, talk about things I like, like watches, cars, um, nice wine, and so on. But it's still fundamentally menswear that I talk about and men's style. Excellent, great. Well, David, um, the reason why we uh, we plucked you for the as a guest for the show today was Matt came up with an idea about an episode for colonial menswear. Matt, you were saying that sometimes you get asked, "Is Bond too colonial?" And is there anyone that could be out yeah. could answer this or perhaps offer some credence to this conversation? And David, you are like my phone a friend, like you are for most topics. You are top of the list, and you were kind enough to come on the show. So, Matt. Uh, do you want to take the reins on this one and ask uh, ask a few questions? Yeah, sure. So yeah, this came up because people have uh, brought up to me that James, some of James Bond's clothes represent imperialism and some of the negative aspects of that. And I suppose the, the safari jacket is naturally the one that's at the top of that list. So, I mean, what do you think the safari jacket or the bush jacket and all those types of clothes represent? First of all, Matt, I think it's interesting that people think that there is this colonial element to, to, to Bond's clothing. I, I think you could probably say, yes, there's a sort of colonial element to his attitude, you know, as a British spy. And that's very much a symptom of the sort of time that uh, Bond appeared in, which was the 50s. Um, but going back to your question about the safari jacket, the safari suits, my understanding is that it, it did have its origins in sort of military wear in the 19th century, but that it didn't actually sort of really appear in its present form until sort of the mid-30s. And that, intriguingly, it seems to have been largely, a, as far as I can see, a sort of an American uh, uh, development of what was previously uh, an item of, of, of military wear. Um, and I think um, one of the earliest sort of exponents of it was uh, Hemingway, wasn't he, who... Who, who's often seen wearing a safari jacket on, on his many uh, safaris and, and hunting trips. So I suspect the question is probably a little bit more complex than, than many might think. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's interesting. 
you know, because I think as an American, I'm a bit removed from you know, the culture of Britain and, uh, the co- you know, and the colonial aspect of that. So, um, but I mean, was because was the safari jacket, and that was something that that the colonists would wear, say, in India. Is that right? Yes, I suppose you could say that as the safari jacket had a sort of military origins, that does give it a, a, a colonial background in some ways, because of course it was probably developed in the 19th century when British troops were going into colonies as then were like India and wherever, uh, and and needing lightweight, light-coloured clothing, because they obviously just couldn't survive in their heavy wool surge red uniforms. Um, so they needed something, they needed something lighter. So it was just simply a practical garment they happened to wear. So I suppose indirectly it has, has some sort of colonial um, uh, uh, sort of basis to it, but uh, no more than that. Yeah, so you, you see it as a, as a very functional garment? Yes, um, and I suppose in, it does seem that in the 30s, um, when people travelled a lot, there'd be a lot of sort of heavy, you know, hunting and so on, uh, and people maybe hunting in Africa, going on safari in Africa, would be looking for a lightweight jacket with plenty of pockets to put, you know, bullets in and sandwiches or, you know, whatever. Um, little bottles of whiskey or whatever. And the safari jacket would have just been there because, of course, you've got the breast pockets, you've got the side pockets, uh, nice loose fits, easy to put on and off. Light, and if it was made of linen or some lightweight cotton, then ideal for, for the function. Um, but I wouldn't sort of give it any more sinister sort of colonial, uh-huh. uh, uh, you know, implications than that. I think. Okay. Yeah, and how about like the other uh, things that they would have worn in the colonies, like the off-white dinner jacket? Is is that is that more of a colonial garment, or is that more American? Well, the word tuxedo itself is American, isn't it? And my understanding is that the tux originated uh, in America. And I'm just trying, I'm sort of struggling to remember the history of the tux, but somebody might be able to help out here. But uh, yeah, what's that? Well, that was also. I mean, um, I mean, it's. I mean, I think Henry Poole claims to have invented that. That's what I was. That's that's what I was trying to remember. Yes, um, but didn't he make them for an American, for one of the Hollywood actors? Um, but it's interesting, you know. Clearly, a lot of these things have as much a sort of American origin as as, as a British origin, and. I suspect that even the white tuxedo, the white dinner jacket, is is you know that colour because people wanted a sort of lightweight jacket, particularly for hot weather, summer events, and so on. And there's something quite crisp looking about a a white jacket, but usually they're cut in the same way as you know the black wool um, jacket. So I suspect there's not really any sort of necessarily any colonial implications there. I'm being very defensive here about colonialism, aren't I? It <laughs> no, yeah. that's it. It doesn't mean Don't I'm... A... Stick your flag in. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so now, also, do you think that is it okay to wear, say, white dinner jackets or safari jackets, you know, in Britain? I have seen a few people at Glyndebourne in uh, the white dinner jacket, but do you, how do you feel about that? Funny enough, I was at Glyndebourne two weekends ago, and I'm absolutely desperate to get myself a, a, a white dinner jacket. So I've got a black evening suit, and I'd like to be able to wear it with a white um, coat, a white jacket on, on, on hot days, simply because it's cooler. Um, and I think there's something really smart in the English sense, the British sense, something very dapper about wearing a, a, a white uh, evening suit, but um, or evening jacket, I should say. But safari jackets, going back to safari jackets, uh, I think people probably agree with me here. They are increasingly being seen on the streets as a sort of a menswear um, fashion item at the moment. And there are a number of brands who are sort of making them in, in various formats and various fabrics. And they are quite popular at the moment. Yeah, I, I'm very glad to hear that they are becoming more popular. I mean, both both the white uh, jacket and the safari jacket are seem to have, really have a big resurgence at the moment. Are they being worn in the states as well? Um, the white dinner jacket, I do see them um, 
I, I did see uh, some at the the um, ballet gala a couple weeks ago, and um, last the opening night of the opera last uh, season in the city, you know, in New York. So some people are wearing them now, and I've been seeing them a lot more in red carpets. Any time of year now, it's not just uh, when it's warm weather. And I think, you know, I suppose we're talking about Bond, aren't we, James Bond? I think there's no doubt that uh, we've seen Craig and many of the other Bonds wearing white dinner jackets, tuxedos, haven't they? And I'm absolutely convinced that that influence is in the minds of many men when they decide, are trying to decide how they're going to dress for a, a summer event or a dinner. You know, you think oh. Bond wears that, so I will. <laughs> yeah, I do think that spectre have, has helped a lot to get, bring back the uh, the white dinner jacket. I, I think it's done a lot for that because, because before Spectre, I wasn't seeing many of those. Just as uh, the, um, the 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 uh, in Skyfall that brought back the midnight blue dinner jacket, just because the the poster emphasized the blue color of the dinner jacket. James Bond's been wearing them all along, but that. To see people seeing that help bring that back. Mm. I think James Bond has had a big influence on uh, fashions, especially tailored fashions. So maybe he will wear the, the safari jacket again. That'll come back even bigger. Talking Can of I the, chime in with the... Um, oh, uh, sorry, David, go on. I was just going to say, talking of the sort of midnight blue dinner suit, evening suit, am I right in thinking that Bond in one of the books is described as wearing a, a, a sort of dark blue, midnight blue dinner suit. I'm just wondering whether it's actually, that's actually found in the books as well as in uh, the more recent films. No, no, the, the midnight blue is not mentioned in the books, but um, it could, it, yeah. I don't know if even, I don't, can't remember if black was mentioned in the context of the dinner suit yeah. in Casino Royale in the book. Thunderball, the, the white dinner jacket's mentioned in yeah. the book. Yeah, no, I just, I just had memory of, of a dark blue, I'm probably just thinking of his day-to-day -day suits, which were right. blue serge, weren't they? Um, but yes, it's an interesting choice of colour for an evening suit, dark blue, because the feeling is it sort of brings out a bit of warmth under artificial light, isn't it? And, and yet still looks very dark and almost black. Right. It's either, some, some have said that, some have mentioned, uh, I think it was the Duke of Windsor had mentioned that it just it, it photographs very well in black and white. Right. Yes, that could well be right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, Pete, did you have something David. to say? Sorry, Pete. Yeah, I was just going to... No, 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 it's fine. Well, actually, I was just going to uh, chime in with a quick memory of Spectre and the white dinner jacket, if I can just dial it back to that. Because, like, I guess many dudes, uh, at the time when the, when the poster came out, um, we all flocked out onto eBay to get our um, white dinner jackets, tuxedo jackets, and uh, I managed to get mine for forty pound. And I went to the premiere, the Jaguar premiere. David, I was lucky enough to get invited down to the Hamyard Hotel for a press screening, um, and it was ridiculously oversized. You know, it came down beyond my knuckles. Um, it it looked pretty hideous. But at the end of at the end of the screening, I actually I was waiting for a, a lift back to the back to the ground floor and. I actually shared a lift with David Gandhi, who's a, a recognised supermodel here in the UK, Matt, I'm sure you know. And like, I could just tell David was aghast at this jacket because it was hideous. It, was like, it nearly came down to my knees, and I'm a small dude anyway, so it just looked really bad. And I've always wanted to like, interview David, and uh, he was actually really pleasant. He was a really nice guy, and uh, he didn't remark on how ridiculous I looked in this really <laughs> massive white dinner jacket. But yeah, at the screening, though, I did see a... a you know, a plethora of, of gentlemen wearing white dinner jackets. And I've yeah. since tried to sell that again on eBay and it keeps on getting returned. They keep on saying it's got blemishes and, yeah, uh, yeah it's just a nightmare. I can't get rid of it. Well, if it's my size, yeah. piece, I might uh, be interested in that. Well, it's uh, it's certainly longer, David. It will, it will certainly fit your frame lengthwise. Um, we should talk about I'm this. I'm not sure the chest was. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll talk about it off air. Maybe we can come to a, come to a, a negotiating yeah. deal. Um, David, uh, did you ha do you have a favourite Bond? I mean, you haven't really tapped into your, your kind of personal tastes in Bond. Bond film, Bond movie. Um, I think mm. it would probably have to be Thunderball. I, I, I really, I do love Craig as a Bond, but uh, sorry, the dog's beginning to. I may have to deal with him in a moment. I do love <laughs> no, Craig no, as okay. Bond, but there's nothing like the original 
Bond films, Bond movies. Uh, and I suppose Connery, like many people, I think Connery is probably the archetypal Bond in many ways, or was. Uh, and uh, Thunderball, I remember going to see, it must have been about, when's it about, 364? I, I must have been less than 10 um, when my grandmother took me to the cinema to see Thunderball. And I very well remember um, seeing it there. It's one film, yeah. Where, what cinema? Was it the was it the Odeon, Leicester Square? This was decades ago, Pete. How do you expect me to remember that? <laughs> I think it might have been that cinema at the end of Kensington High Street, um, if there's one still there, down uh, sort of the west end of Kensington High Street. Sorry, Matt, this is probably completely right. <laughs> irrelevant to you, but uh, I think it probably was there because my, my grandparents lived just off Kensington High Street. Ah. Well, dude, one of the things I was going to ask you was, do you have any memories of what the sea change or the mood was like when we had... A new bond come to the fray so i'm i'm guessing you're kind of too young to get the the emancipation of roger moore taking over but maybe when dalton comes in do you remember like what the mood was like around that did you did you really care was there was was the hype overwhelming like i mean imagine what it's going to be like when someone takes over from daniel craig it, it would just be you know ubiquitous won't it the press with it so what was it like at that time well, of course, this was the days long before social media, the internet, and, you know, any discussion of that sort was in the newspapers or on television or on the radio, maybe. Um, but even I remember every time there was some discussion, and usually it was um, critical, um, because as with anything in life, you know, what's already there, what's already established is what people begin to see as the norm. So when a new one comes along, it's bound to be worse. You know, we're, we're just like that, aren't we? Uh, although may, maybe, maybe Americans are more positive about this sort of thing, but the Brits like to have a moan about everything. So, uh, uh, you know, it's bound to be like that when, when, when Craig um, is, is removed and we have somebody else. Yeah, interesting. Well, David, listen, thanks so much for coming on. Um, Matt, I don't know if you had anything else that you wanted to grill David on. Um, not, probably not this time. We can save that for the next time. But uh, th yeah. thank you for coming yeah. on the podcast, David. Th thank you very much, Matt. And I have to say how much I love your, uh, your website. Uh, oh, thank you. Well, I, you know, as I was saying earlier, Bond does provide a lot of sort of inspiration for how one dresses. And uh, uh, I, I do occasionally go on it and have a look just to sort of see... Good ideas, really, you know, the way one dresses, the style one adopts does depend so much on external influences and Bond and your website is are, are a great influence. Well, thank you. And thank uh, I look at you uh, for influence as well. I am always... Uh... In, the, in the Terry romper? <laughs> <laughs> no, more of those, uh, the tailored clothes. But I no, I do appreciate what you do, David, and um, I... I uh, I am, I'm always uh, very interested to see what you wear. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. Great. Well, gentlemen, um, thank you both for the time. Um, bid you good evening, good weekend, and no doubt I'll speak and see, to, see you both soon.